Hello and good afternoon, everybody. Myself, Ekta Sagal Malhotra. You're watching live in conversation with me. Today we have a mother who will be talking about some aspects of the mental health as to how it is important for family to be involved with any concerns related to mental health, especially for young adults. Given the time that we are all going through, difficult and challenging times where many of us are locked inside the house without any human interaction. She is not only a mother, obviously a wife, a friend, and currently works as the HR head for an automobile uh, service company. She is also, uh, you know, comes from a background which has a very strong heritage, has been in a family where understanding relationships, bonding is essential. So we welcome Ms. Pranjali Malhotra on our show. And before I go on talking about her, I would like her to introduce herself in her own way and share her thoughts on mental health and young adults, and most importantly, the role of family. So over to you, Pranjali. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, I've been a uh, I've been a user of this platform uh, for some time now. I've tried and participated whenever uh, you guys are doing such good work. Uh, kudos to all of you. Akansha, Shweta, I have never met, but uh, I've met her virtually here. And uh, Ita, you guys are doing phenomenal work. Um, tons of appreciation for this. Uh, so like, you. um, you, you've introduced me well. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, I, um, I, I, um, I, be, I come from a background of psychology and social work and uh, past 30 years have been in the development sector, uh, not worked very regularly full time, have off and on taken up projects and work, freelanced mostly, attached, I was attached with a couple of NGOs and uh, I've uh, uh, it won't be improper for me to say that I have uh, many firsts to my credit. Um, I worked with the Prime Against Women Cell as the first uh, counselor, the very first time they introduced the idea of counseling uh, in cases of dowry and in cases of suicide and harassment. So, and uh, also free legal aid for women and uh, matrimonial cases and child custody cases and uh, uh, we did a program for television called Chupe Chehre, which I helped, the research I helped, which later was converted into Satya uh, okay. for Star Plus. And um, so um, many first, then I did, we, uh, as part of Jamia University, they hired me and we did a, a, a research on um, well-being or psychosocial well-being of middle-aged women. Now, women um, are uh, not homogeneous. They're different age groups. Women have different issues, different problems, different capacities, different needs. So middle age, somehow, the uh, once you cross the reproductive age uh, and you're yet not senior citizens, so that age between 45 and 60, 65 is most neglected. And that's the crux. That's the age 40 to 60, more so 45 to 60, when you're not in the reproductive cycle, kind of. Um, but you are very, very productive. That's the age when I think you're most productive. And I'm sure uh, some of us, I'm an older woman, but some of you um, there uh, on the platform also fall in that kind of age bracket. So we did this pioneering research for Ministry of Women and Child. And uh, we came up with a many uh, very good conclusive uh, results where uh, the role of family uh, came out very, very strongly. For women at this age, it, it was a sample size of 1,000 women, daily NCR, and um, across sections, across classes, across uh, demography. Um, uh, we, we found that family was the most important uh, component in, of, in their well-being. So um, when it came to family, of course, at this age, they had young children, they had spouses, and they had elderly in-laws as well as parents to take care of. So um, that was one thing. And that is where mental health, you know, came out very significantly because well-being and mental health are very connected. 
though uh, the narrative in our country earlier was only talking about mental illness we were talking about mental illness we were not talking about mental well being earlier but since last 4 5 years the narrative has changed and we are most comfortable to talk about mental well and the wellness the wellness uh, part of it. uh more so now with the young adults ever since uh, ever since very uh, illustrious people and celebrities and other people and schools and colleges teenage health adolescent health all these mental health have become significant people have been talking about it and uh, as you all may know especially after sushant's case uh, that india has the highest in the world india has the maximum number of suicides in the young adult age group i don't know the ratio of the male female uh, part of it but uh, overall we have the highest number of young suicides sides um and uh, one reason because that's the age group where uh, in our country we still prefer the family setup we still live within the family so somewhere uh, of course like if you are a young adults who are on their own they're working their career people they move out of the homes but mostly even if they move out the family is a very big binding component for these young adults so why why is it that india has such a you know in the west we say ki oh it's isolation they're away from the families they live on their own so that could be a cause for mental health issues but why so much in india when we have family so i felt it was very important to address this um, no, I, i think it's a very family. important topic uh, because i think more so now especially when uh, you know we're all caught up in the house uh, you know that human engagement has gone so i think if the families don't bind together at these challenging times whether they stay Absolutely. in the house together or they are you know uh, in different places uh, mm. i think pe- each one of us will completely go uh, you know crazy so you're right absolutely absolutely, okay, absolutely. Yeah. and um, um, yeah so so if we were to look at this topic that we have put today and we break it into family mental health young adults uh, there is a linkage we cannot isolate these three they are all very co-joined uh, with each other and uh, so if the family it's both ways is cause and effect um, the family i feel is the biggest reason for causing mental well unwellness reasons mental health issues and also it is the biggest support system so it's very uh, the dichotomy is very intriguing uh, because um, you know the pressures which come from the family uh, right from childhood the pressures to perform the pressures to behave the pressures to not let down the family socially the socialization happens the per- child's first socialization happens within the family and there are pressures which keep mounting unknowingly on the individual and they later manifest into complexes or into other kind of various issues which can harm a person's psyche you know shaming shaming is a very common thing in families body shaming is again a very common thing in families and it's done out in the garb of fun it's done in the garb of leg pulling and uh, but it, especially for young adults young if we were to get teenagers or young adults 18 to 21 when they're so today's teenagers and young adults have many pressures outside as well so they they have to cope up and family is the only place where they can come back and kind of have that cushion of comfort but it, it so happens that unknowingly the family causes that you know the the expectations are so high we may not say that we expect anything from our children but unknowingly the expectations are there and um, that is one reason and of course we you know in our country um, we are talking a lot about sex education um, sorry my hair are all over the place when you wash them on a sunday uh, so you know sexual education is a very taboo topic even today we do say that school may sexual education ke upar hona chahiye they should talk about sex education they but as a family we never talk about it like we never make our young boys especially the boys we don't sit with them we don't talk to them about uh, menstruation we don't tell them about menarche that a certain age your sister or your friend will go through that we never talk to young boys about child sexual abuse 
we tell them about good touch bad, bad touch to the young girls but we don't tell the boys we just don't tell them that you know girls can also go through this we might a father might tell a son or a mother might tell a son ki kisi ko haath nahi lagane dena don't go out with a servant or don't uh, in the park if somebody misbehaves with you come back and tell us but we don't tell them the implications because we feel they're not ready for it why expose a child but that's not true because they are adults even when they are young you have to treat them like an individual you cannot just treat them like children you treat them each one as an individual and uh, you know fathers have a very big responsibility here when it comes to men uh, the young boys um, i don't think families talk about masturbation i don't think families talk about nightfall uh, they they kind of just brush it under and they kind of ignore it and let the boys discover these things on their own to the peers no school talks about it which is very that is why we are having all the cyber crime and uh, internet issues and bullying and you know all the mms kind of thing because we never talk about these things so i think the role of the family is very very crucial when you are dealing with sexuality and my son he uh, he passed out school in 2013 um but 7 years ago i really don't know what the school scene is right now but we were watching some show on television and he just turned around and he said mom i'm sorry 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 um a uh, mom we were never told about child sexual abuse we should have been made aware we sh- it is so rampant now i when i talk to my friends when i read when i watch i understand so many of my girlfriends went through child sexual abuse when they were children they went through abuse but nobody told told us that these things happen so you know men are getting away and nirbha played a very big role uh, in making the boys aware about looking after young girls and then patriarchy you know the gender roles we we are talking about gender roles as women we are talking about gender roles but we are not as a family talking about gender roles are, so the shift see the fulcrum of everything is the family. so there is a shift there is a shift in how girls are being looked at we are giving them the autonomy we are looking we are trying to but we are not balancing it with the men so there is an unpleasantness within the family structure already boys feel that in schools girls are preferred because dant to sari ladko ko padke ladkiyon ko to koi nahi dant punishment sari ladko ko hoti hai even in the family the if we are you know kind of promoting the girl more the boy kind of so how to get that balance is where family steps in and uh, personally i uh, had an experience uh, where my daughter um, she's she's a very pretty girl and uh, very very athletic um, was a dancer bharatanatyam as well as jazz dancer and at 18 she went to us to pursue her studies and the first 6 months uh, she just was out of uh, she was just exploring and she had no idea about about food the the dining hall food was just a snack for her because it wasn't food 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 and she gained weight she was never overweight that's where she gained some weight she looked nice in spite of that but she felt that her friends are telling her ki moti ho gayi ho moti ho gayi ho america jaake moti ho so that kind of tri- triggered a uh, need to lose weight and uh, that turned into an illness because she just stopped eating she that was the first brush as a family which we had of mental health in a young child because you feel that ye to bade logon mein hota hai depression was there in the family i've had uncle and an and an aunt who suffered from depression so we kind of were familiar and coming from a social work background and a psychology background the awareness was there but for it to happen to your own child probably that awareness is there you know that uh, it can be so harmful it can be life threatening and she can have uh, so much trouble not just uh, having an eating disorder she was diagnosed with anorexia nervosa uh, and uh, it wasn't just about eating disorder it messed up entirely her uh, vitals the body vitals and her health and psychologically also it messed her up so uh, luckily she was in a country like america and in a university system where their health facilities were great and they kind of 
took care of her very nicely, holistically. They gave her a therapist, they gave her a nutrition lady, and they gave her a general physician to take care of all her health and other needs. But what she needed was the family. What she actually needed was the support of the family. So as an international student, she had the option to come for one semester, stay home, and then go back in summer and cover up for that semester. So her school advised, her college advised that she should take that option. And she came to India and she stayed with us. Like she was here for six months. And that is when the, we actually saw that how, how it had played on her mind, uh, how depriving herself of food and how this disease had actually tampered her self-confidence. And she was a very confident girl. She went in in a medical program, only six people of the entire world got selected in that program. And there was always this thing, oh, Prajvi is very good. She's a perfecter. She'll do well. She'll excel. So that pressure which she had also got translated in the body type. She wanted to be perfect. Her body had to be perfect. It couldn't have been an inch extra or an ounce extra. So um, anyways, we, we did consult doctors and uh, her father really, really played a big role in it, more than me. Uh, he was the one who actually took care of her, her food, her exercise, introduced her to weightlifting. We created a gym in our house, uh, we got the weights and uh, he helped her. She couldn't even lift a two kg weight. And in a span of six months, she was doing 100 kg deadlifts and uh, so as a family so we were three people my husband myself and son so we had our roles defined to look after her uh, he looked after my husband looked after her food and exercise part of it I looked after her uh, mental space part of it that spoke to her interacted with her in that way and my son looked after the entertainment part of it <laughs> He he just made her happy and laughed with her. And uh, in fact, she had stopped laughing and she had stopped smiling. And her therapist in America would give her an aid to put in her mouth so that the lips could open and she could have a smile. So, you know, it, it had become that bad. And they would tell me I would be on uh, video conferences with her doctors there. And they would tell me that, you know, we don't know if she's depressed and that is why she's not eating or because she's not eating, she is depressed because it is um, eating disorder is something. And, you know, in a country like India, in families like ours, uh, we force feed. We force feed people. If we don't keep our things in our house, then we will keep our own best. We have not attend to it. और हम अगर किसी के घर जाते हैं और उसने खाली चाय पिला दी तो लगता है हम तो गए हमें खाली चाय पिला दी सो द कंट्री एज कल्चरली वी आर वेरी फूड ओरिएंटेड यू नो एनीथिंग इज रिलेटेड टू फूड एनी सेलिब्रेशन इज रिलेटेड टू फूड एंड वेयर इफ अ यंग गर्ल इज नॉट ईटिंग एंड शी शी जस्ट स्टॉप विजिटिंग फैमिली शी जस्ट स्टॉप इंटरैक्टिंग मीटिंग पीपल कि जाऊंगी तो घर खाने के लिए बोल so you know like so the withdrawal started happening at every stage and step but we were very very fortunate we had a good set of doctors and as a family we were able to uh, help her and um, help our own selves uh, to understand that what it was and we also you know it's very very important uh, that if there is a problem, you need to be thorough with it. As a parent, as a family, you need to do your research thoroughly. Um, in today's day and time, this is not enough. You have to be a khat upar. Then the person who is going through it, as well as your own doctors, you need to know everything before so that you your doubts can be answered, your questions, and you can watch for the triggers and the signals. Once you can watch for the signals, then you will take care. You will make sure that those things are, if they're avoidable, they would be avoided. And uh, luckily, of course, it was, a, it was a bad phase for six months, but she was fine. And she went back to, uh, back to college. And uh, I went with her, stayed with her for a few months. And uh, she's, she's working now. It's been a, it's been a thing of the past. But yes, even today she has anxiety. Even today she feels uh, she feels judged. 
she feels that her illness has made the other people not trust her anymore because there's always this question if you ask the kadi khana khaya so it is always ki do you not believe in me anymore do you think i won't eat and this always as a mother or a father or a family is always this thing which bothers you we are also equally anxious with her that uh, you know what if what if uh, she's not eating well because she's away and i think we always had this option of not letting her go of keeping her to ourselves but that wouldn't have helped because that would have compromised in other her achievements which would have made her even more miserable so what my learning from this whole process as a mother as a human as a woman was that we needed to allow her that space yet monitor it and be hands on we had to be there for her where she could we had to create that atmosphere as a family where she could confide in us where she could tell us if any time she feels that she's faltering or she's going back into that kind of a pain uh, then she can trust us then she can talk to us and to look upon us that yes they would help me they will not judge me they will not mistrust me but they will hold my hand and take me to the next level uh, so that that's a very personal uh, brush with mental health a young young adult mental health and uh, um, i'm sure if anybody has anything to ask uh, so, uh, you know i completely agree with you uh, especially the you know uh, where you mentioned that uh, we don't uh, as parents uh, you know you're not taught about sex education or anything i would say that forget about talking about sex education if i go back i mean i'm much younger to you but if i go back to my school days and especially you know when you enter class 9th and that's when the whole uh, biology is explained to you the you know the male and the female anatomy is explained uh, i remember that the teacher used to take separate classes for boys and girls yeah because exactly. you know they would begin with taking a class together but they would eventually have boys laughing about it because probably the boys were more exposed to the than the girls were about these uh, body parts and then the teacher had no option and invariably it used to be a lady teacher so mm-hmm. she herself used to find it you know instead of educating the children about it she used to find it very embarrassing to explain things to them and mm-hmm. most often they're not that you know that chapter used to be just brushed out okay just kind of finish it off from a you know tick mark point of view mm-hmm. and uh, i i completely agree with you i think the most important thing as i understand on the mental uh, health space is that uh, the acknowledgement of it that there is a underlying problem i think is the mm-hmm. most uh, important uh, Thing, you know, because basis that only can you take any corrective uh, absolution, right? And uh, you know, I mean, I'm so glad that uh, I mean, I've seen Prajvi. You know, she's a very young, vibrant girl doing exceptionally well. And who would imagine that you know, uh, a, such a confident girl would get impacted by statements from people around that? Oh, you put on weight, and I think uh, body shaming, talking about the way you look, happens to each one of us as we Absolutely. grow up. You know, you are Absolutely. thin, you're fair, you're dark. You're, fact mm-hmm. and uh, uh, we uh, we had another mother who was speaking to us uh, where she also spoke about how her daughter uh, you know because of the circumstances uh, had was exposed to ocd and how they eventually you know brought back her confidence so i think it is uh, very important that uh, you know people like you and her come out in the public domain the way you have and talk about these things because i think that stigma attached to the mental health has to go out Hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, you know, since you are into the uh, space of uh, social work and you've also done your psychology, what steps do you think uh, that people should take, or what cues should one look at to know that whether the child is going through any such internal dispute within self? How should we as parents recognize those things? And at, uh, you know, is there an age when this sets in, or it could happen to as young? as maybe 3 4 year old children or it happens only when they are in their adolescence or uh, adulthood see uh, see if a child i i personally feel it, it's it's in them it happens right through the different stages of life its manifestation may be different sometime it could be exam pressure how they're dealing with the pressure of an exam sometime it could be um, you know a classroom situation a project which didn't get completed and the teacher scolded and how the child is 
reprimanded and coming back and taking it out small, as small as that. Or it could be a home situation where there is some, um, some conflict in the family or some uh, health issue with a family elder. So how a child reacts to these situations? These are the focal points. We, we usually don't give importance to these things in a household. These are just straight, are koi baat nahi, sabka exam, sabko exam fever hota hai, kar, but actually it, the underlying thing is that you are not good at handling pressure. You are not good. People who, mostly people who are vulnerable to mental health issues are the ones where, where the balance of pressure, the input of the pressure and the output of the crisis management doesn't take place in a balanced form. So they internalize the pressure so much that when they give it out, their reflexes or their actions do not help them overcome that pressure. So therefore, there is an imbalance. Of course, there are genetic reasons. Of course, there are hormonal issues. And especially around this age where there is menarche sets in and girls and boys are going through you know, boys and body hair, facial hair, all that is happening. Of course, that's the time when um, the hormonal uh, imbalance in the body also cre creates uh, mental health issues. It takes away the concentration power, the attention span reduces. Acne, acne is the most important and the most decisive factor in that age. Young girls, they put, uh, they put different types of things on their face to hide. I remember my daughter used to put a bandaid to hide her pimples. Uh, so, you know, these are small things which we never give importance to, but they are very, very important because these small little uh, pressures add up to uh, a bigger... Uh, so it's all about crisis management. Like if you start giving them tasks right from childhood to manage their things, it's not about managing their table or managing their bed or going grocery shopping or something. But emotional, emotional management, you know, where psychologically they are exposed to certain things. One way of doing that is making them participate in all decision making for the family, whether small, whether big, whether I, I know you talk a lot about um, uh, financial uh, planning and budgeting, where the family needs to be included and the children need to know what the Similarly, for emotional things, if the family is going through any financial crisis, the child needs to know that. If the family is going through any emotional crisis, a lot of families are breaking now. The husband wife conflicts are very real. So there also the children need to be involved. We cannot say in today's day and time of internet exposure that my child is too young to understand this. No child is young enough to understand. It is the language which you will use to make them understand it may differ for a 15 year old or for a seven year old or for a 20 year old, but, and they're very sensitive and they are very, very intelligent. Every child is extremely, extremely intelligent. There is no child. I refuse to believe this, that any one child is less intelligent than a child. It is just, somebody might be verbal about it. Somebody, somebody might internalize it. But unki thinking power, unki samaj equal ho hai. Or wo, they come up with solutions for themselves. So emotional involvement of a child in day-to-day -day family life situations, in outside home situations, if there are certain issues, whether they're sexuality, whether it is crime, whether it is political, whether it is a disease like corona, where their involvement needs to be there. They, they need to be made responsible. You know, as a responsible, if they are responsible adults, individual young adults, then I think the pressures would be less. Yeah. In fact, uh, I think uh, last week uh, we had a mother who is also into the line of education. She made a very powerful statement that you know we mm. all always celebrate the success of a child, mm. but we never expose themselves to failure. We don't, Absolutely. and we don't even acknowledge that. Look, you failed, but it's okay because that will it's be okay. stepping it's stone. Okay. So, I, uh, so what I want to understand from you is that, uh, you know, with the kind of uh, so many suicide cases that are happening, you know, mm -hmm. as you mentioned in the beginning that India has the maximum number of cases mm -hmm. and looking at the, you know, the good old traditional ways of the Indian culture, family mm -hmm. binding, you know, that family bonding and 
uh, you know, earlier from joint family to nuclear family, of course, mm -hmm. we transited from uh, for different reasons. But is that also a reason why the Indian minds are more susceptible to taking such harsh decisions? Well, you know, it's a hopelessness. It's a situation of hopelessness where the child feels hopeless that uh, because the child is never taken seriously. You know, his, his or her uh, feelings are never given any importance because the child, child or the young adult uh, feels that even if they were to go with this crisis or this problem to their teachers or to their family or to their elder people in the family, they are not going to be taken seriously. So when the child is weighted with those problems, they are under that pressure or the young adult is under that pressure. Uh, they just don't know whom to turn to. There might be a pilotra of uh, relatives. There might be an extended family or a joint family, but somewhere deep down the child has been snubbed so often. And you know, a uh, physical beating is a very common thing in our country. Corporal punishment, whether it is in school or whether it is at home, the, the physical abuse, we talk about sexual abuse, we don't talk about physical abuse. So that child, right from childhood, knows that what parents to resolve karna nahi aata, ye to mere kya karenge, denge at the most. Even if, you know, young, young girls have come up with these things that if they like a boy or they write a letter or they nowadays messages are caught or some other, um, if the parents come to know about a relationship, the first recourse is to hit the girl. You know, so so the the young person, most of the cases of suicide have in women happen because they want to marry somebody or they have an affair where the parents do not want them to have an affair or to get married. Most of the suicides happen there in women. In boys, of course, there could be different reasons, but mostly in girls, this is one of the reasons. So the trust factor, coming back to the trust factor. The child doesn't trust the family, that the family will side with them. That's why, you know, there's a mushrooming of love gurus now because they, they, <laughs> they feel that they can turn to somebody outside rather than the family or the comfort of parents. To, uh... So, um, you know, there is a comment that has come on Facebook that uh, mm -hmm. this is true. Children and teenagers feel we do not understand or even try to understand that them. Yes. Uh, yes. So, uh, so basically, uh, also, I'd like you to throw some light that, uh, you know, as you said, that uh, the family plays a very important role. So do the uh, growing years, you know, have a major impact on the child's or any adult's uh, well-being? And what Absolutely. families do or parents should be doing so that uh, the, the, the trust is being Built with children, especially for children who are not very vocal, you know, who are probably introvert. Because an extrovert, I feel, would still talk about it. So, is the mental health concern more prevalent in people who are introverted as compared to? No, no, equally. There is, there is no, there is no, there is no. Uh, well, there could be studies. I am not aware of. There could be studies where introvertedness or a personality type could be one of the reasons. Like when the, you do research, you have a control group and you have an experimental group. There, this thing could have been controlled, and I'm not aware. There must have been some conclusive studies about that, uh, but uh, it it is uh, across across personality types. There is uh, no uh, some personalities are more susceptible to, uh, but there, of course, further research needs to be done. Whether it is nutrition, whether it is uh, other genetic reason, or there is a uh, there is some. Um, chemical imbalance in terms of the dopamine, serotonin levels or some, such thing. But um, mostly, uh, mostly it is all over. It's all over the place. And uh, sorry, I, I, I think I'm missing what you said. Uh, so my second question was that uh, how should parents deal with children so that the trust factor gets built in no matter what the child opens up with the parent Good, okay, bad, ugly. Got, got it. I got it. See, we have to understand that parents will be parents. Okay, they cannot be best friends. That area for best friends is left for best friends. That generation gap will you. Your child can be your best friend, but you cannot be your child's best friend. 
this is something which as parents we need to understand and if we understand this we will not have expectations because parent has to be a parent if we may have an approach to parenting might be friendly you might not be very uh, controlled parent or you may not be a helicopter parent or you might be just intuitive parent or you you might just learn from intuition and uh, day to day and you may not have a, an agenda as a, as a parent but you are a parent so the generation gap will always be there and uh, we we uh, unknowingly uh, want to build that generation gap but then it becomes disrespectful then the children do not treat you like a parent anymore then they cross their limits which again bothers you you want them to be respectful you because if they are respectful to you they will be respectful to your age group so you kind of you know that that balance again needs to be talked about but whereas that what you talked about trust trust only comes when you uh, guarantee them that uh, that whatever they may do it will be non judgment your parenting will be non judgment even if the child robs anybody or steals anybody robs is a big word even if the child comes back home with a, some other child's pencil or a or some fancy rubber or something you are not going to judge that child you're going to explain to the child and tell him look okay you need this you like this was it a mistake you have to in, you have to get into a conversation and come to the uh, learn the depth of it that what triggered this kind of a behavior because in children normally you know these are uh, anti social um, things which start breaking the trust in the relationship you know if the child has done some shaitani the child is scared that if i go back and tell my parent i'm not going to be looked in with the same respect they are going to mistrust me they are going to judge me i'm going to let them down so that all that anger needs to uh, the more you talk to your children more you create that environment and like i uh, initially i did talk about you know homes breaking and uh, with the um, the kind of we are having a lot of gray gray divorces now we are having a lot of separations at uh, middle ages and um, so when the homes are uh, when there is uh, dysfunctionality in a household and there is no uh, there is no cohesiveness and the parents are not on the same page then the children do not develop trust with the parents because they feel that they cannot solve their own problems how are they going to solve their own mind so that is a very challenging thing because as uh, more and more women are uh, uh, are asserting their rights which are very very important which has been neglected for very long and they're learning to have a voice uh, children are feeling the brunt of the families uh, original balance being broken so there the work needs to come from the father's side i think we are always burdening the mother with her duties to bring the trust to look after the children and you know do the here the involvement of the male figure male head the father needs to be there sometimes you know there i if i was to talk about my family you've seen i think my husband is more of a mother to the children than me i'm the stricter father so they there has to be a, a kind of a real mix the father has to be the mother at times and has to be there involved in all their uh, all their activities equally involved because a unit will only come they will only learn to solve their problems and trust you to solve their problems if you come as a unit it could be a grandparent it necessarily not be just the parent it could be a grandparent and a parent together as a come as a as a team it could be grandparents only as a team the child needs to have that anchor in the family whom he or she feels will not judge okay. this is very easy to judge children you know we we do, we do that all the time not knowingly we judge our children absolutely we have another comment saying that uh... it helps not to shame them we shouldn't be the ones that they are afraid of i think you know children should look up to their parents as why exactly. uh, you know as you said that a parent is a parent and uh, we cannot be we can be friends but we cannot be that best friend 
to a child but i think that relationship of friendliness or openness uh, that there course, is you know and i think it uh, the onus also lies on uh, parents uh, like us that uh, we have a open communication with yes. you know and we we come with the we all come with our own baggages you know we come with our baggage of uh, the kind of parenting module we have been exposed to if my parenting module has been dysfunctional then my uh, upbringing of my children somewhere will be dysfunctional because that is what i have learned i have not had a good role model in form of a parenting model to duplicate um i know a lot of people will not agree to this uh, thing but this is the truth we le- we do what we learn it's an un- the unlearning is what is important you know if we uh, we have come from stricter backgrounds our parents our gen- parents generation had a firm mind of certain things where economy where uh, making use of everything no no uh, could be waste wastage nahi honi chahiye you know, we've been taught that kind of things whereas we as parents have been very indulgent parents you know we we would let them it doesn't matter you want another thing okay take it just get out of my head kind of a, a lot of us have done that also i'm not saying you guys must have but i'm talking maybe i'm a generation yeah, there are older there but, are many more uh, who would do yeah, that yeah so um you know that that is where uh, we need to as parents we need to unlearn the kind of parenting we have learned. we have to change with the times we we you know i mean um i've had friends uh, who very proudly they would say ke, oh now, now i fit into my daughter's clothes now i fit into all my daughter's blouses because she's gotten married and she's left all her dresses behind and i'm the one who's wearing them okay fine you're not wasting money in buying them but are you is the daughter appreciating that are you behaving how as a mother you should be behaving so this blurring of uh, uh, roles because of uh, wanting to be young wanting to stay young wanting to um, wanting to be in the social media circle <laughs> that's the new kitty party circle to no? <laughs> to be in the Absolutely. social media kitty parties are aw- awesome oh. actually kitty parties are really good they help women all my women in the middle age group for them socialization came for a lot of them from satsang and for a lot of them to kitty parties and that is one thing which they own they feel that's the best time of the t- week they have when they go out with their friends or when they so coming back to the more serious thing uh, is that they uh, you you have to be the role. you have to do a lot of unlearning as a parent you have a lot of responsibility So oh, uh, you know uh, that's a very uh, one of the favorite topics that I like to have a discussion on. I mean, of course, I'm a young parent, and oh, well, uh, sometimes we feel we do good. Sometimes we're not doing good. You know, we also have a moment where we will shout, and sometimes you get a whack on the bum also. So you know, and then you obviously then think whether you did right or wrong. So I guess everybody learns. Uh, you know as the day progresses. Hands on, hands on. Hands on. There, there is no, there is no guide. No yeah. There is. there is nothing in this world parenting happens every day i'm sure your pa- your mother learns her uh, her uh, rule of parenting every day even with you as an adult as a mother uh, right. so if parenting is till the time you are alive you, you would be and you are a parent you would learn it absolutely in fact i know someone who even says that uh, you know you are a parent to the children but uh, your parenting doesn't even come to anyone when you become a grandparent you know because it continues because you are still concerned about the child and subsequently the child's child what i want to ask you is that you know there's a very interesting point that you brought forward that the way uh, your generation or even probably coming to mine you know the way we were brought up with a lot of discipline with a lot of strictness with a lot of concept of not wasting things and valuing everything that was there because probably i mean and it wasn't that there was scarcity of things it just that we were made to resources resources were resources scarce were less, and... but yeah. at the same time we were made to uh, understand that you know we should not waste things because there is a uh, you know there is uh, there is repercussions to that uh, you know whatever it could be there could be people who don't get things do you think that uh, the current the younger generation you know for once i will agree i mean that i'm not so young but talking about the you know the new teenagers or the ones who have just started to work 
do you think that the impact of these uh, external comments is more on them because they are not exposed to any kind of struggle or any kind of uh, hardships in their growing year because parents are making it very easy for them to okay. live this life no uh, the, uh, you what you are what i understand from what you say is that hardship in terms of economy right not the any resources. economy in terms of like you know everything resources. is coming to them and on they a have the excess yeah. they have the excess which uh, so uh, what we forget here is uh, ekta that these youngsters the teenagers and the young adults since we're talking about young adults more their struggles are different it's not that their struggles are any lesser their struggles are just it's just that they're different they may not be their struggles may not be identical to what our parents struggle was or our challenges were their challenges are very very different and a generation after them who are still in school or primary school their uh, challenges would be different so with every decade every 10 years or every 5 years now the challenges change uh, like like we've had the new education policy now so right. the challenge accordingly they they changed it they changed the policy because whether good or bad is not the question of debate here uh, the thing is that we need to reinvent ourselves right similarly the challenges for different generations also reinvent they come up in a different form they may have access to finances or they may not be concerned about looking after their parents in their old age because parents they are looking at, trying to make sure that they don't become uh, they don't depend on children in that way that they don't want to burden their children by for look to look after them but their challenges will be different now the biggest challenge is like you had a great session yesterday on loneliness um, the biggest challenge today is of loneliness of isolation of not finding the right partner my daughter at th- at 28 she's 28 and if she says mom if i'm without a boyfriend it means that certainly there is some if i'm looking at tinder or if i'm looking at a matrimonial site that means certainly something is wrong with me that i don't have a boyfriend till 28 so we are the we are these few women who don't have a boyfriend at 28 she has a group of friends who are single so i said like you know uh, why do you say so she says yeah definitely if at 28 we are looking at these sites and we're going out for a dating apps that means that there is certainly something wrong with us at this so that's a challenge of today's times to find the right partner is a challenge parents are not doing anything for their children they're not even match making anymore for their young children or young men young boys young sons and young daughters because they feel that okay ab kaam kar rahe hain alag hain apne aap apne liye ladka dhoond lenge yaar tum ladka bhi nahi apne liye dhoond sakte ho ya ladki bhi nahi apne liye dhoond sakte ho wo bhi kaam maa baap pe chhodoge so as a result you know we are we are we feel we are together but we are breaking the family structure loneliness is a very very big thing being on their own they might have the they might have the privilege of being earning they might have the financial independence but they do not have the emotional independence they are still very dependent emotionally on the family as well as emotionally on human beings so that emotion does not get reciprocated when that emotion doesn't get reciprocated then comes loneliness and then comes that anxiety which leads to mental unwellness you know anxiety is the biggest cause of uh, which the maximum number of cases of anxiety and depression they call it the chunumunu problems of mental health they don't anxiety and uh, bipolarity is a bigger one anxiety and ocd and all these things they don't even consider them as worthy problems of uh, giving them much uh, attention but they are with young adults they may not they, unless unless of course you are uh, you have a major illness in terms of schizophrenia or bipolarity or any other severe mental disorder otherwise um, the little problems which they call them little but which are so, so consuming for the individual whether it is anxiety whether it is depression whether it is just sheer loneliness which plays with their psyche and uh, family really really needs to be there it needs even if you're not physically there one if you're physically there you have to be totally with them and not judge them just accept them they may do anything any time any wrong any harm but you have to be there as a pillar of strength 
even if you're not physically then then virtually you need to keep up true or nahi karte phone they may not return your calls but you may they may you get they may get troubled by your repeated consecutive messaging but please do it don't leave them alone. yeah i think because i think uh, you know the way your anxiety or other emotions keep suppressing inside somewhere it may just come out that you know nobody really reached out to me Absolutely. you know Absolutely. while you may not acknowledge when the person is reaching out to you but then that may also lead to another trigger in the mind that nobody really cared about me when i was all by myself yeah yeah, yeah. nobody loves me i'm unloved i'm unloved true, true. the true. feeling of being unloved is the worst that i think causes the greatest mental harm to any individual be it any age even okay. in older people adults older adults like okay degenerate it's a degenerative disease so people must just by 70 a lot of Uh, older people geriatric so if you read uh, a lot of older people suffer from depression that could be a bodily thing lack of nutrition drop in energy diabetes all those could lead to depression but one major reason is worthlessness that they do not feel wanted anymore they do not feel loved anymore uh, that exactly the same thing in young children young children young adults middle aged young women everybody if you do not feel loved and worthy then of course all sorts of neg- negative thoughts absolutely absolutely so absolutely uh, you know great insights you have shared and explained it in a very simple manner for each one of us to understand that how you know we I need to so. pay yes. attention to the small cues because we may think that they are small or they are very tiny uh, issues but they eventually can blow up and when they do then probably we may not be able to do any kind of a control so before i uh, uh, you know um, let you go uh, what would be your piece of advice to the young parents or even the you know older ones who have young children or small children that what should they do to make a, a happy family or a happy environment so what if we have our own struggle which will always be there which will always be there what should they will go hand they will go parallel to the child struggle your struggles will go parallel true so what what would be your uh, guidance or your message okay. to them hmm that's a tough <laughs> sabse pehle i think you should just celebrate your children you should just feel so happy that you have them and give them that importance in your lives um where they feel they are your jewels where they feel your love just love them as much as you can and show that love show that love whether it is in form of hugging whether it is in form of kissing them we you know bachche especially young adults bade ho jate hain to wo hum physically withdraw kar jate hain unse which is not needed uh, you need to you know sometimes just put your arm around the child when the child is sleeping just go cuddle up next to your child now the child will not come and cuddle with you anymore once they have grown up they'll hesitate especially boys you know when um, they have all these hairy legs they don't want to come next to you <laughs> but just just make sure that you are there for them you are always there for them and uh, uh, that you are just a phone call away or just a message away or just uh, physically you are you'll always be for them and also i think the physical uh, proximity to your child is very we forget that we forget that uh, you know we have this lady the hugging amma who just gives hugs to everybody i know corona is bad you cannot hug um each and everybody but that physicality is very important that touch the 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 touch which uh, you know when you touch somebody you kind of transfer your your emotions your positivity into the other that's what reiki and all these things also tell us about uh, that you have to have that physical relation with your child in terms of hug even if they are much older don't hesitate don't hesitate uh, they might say bal kharab kar diye they might say anything but just be there they would appreciate it they may not appreciate it now but down the line they would really really appreciate and um, sorry i said last but i'll ask you one more that in these sure, current sure. most welcome in current time you know because mental health is one um, i i can't even call it a topic i think that's one concern which bothers Absolutely. many and more in these challenging times what is it that each one of us can do to kind of uh, get ourselves away from the negative emotions that keep coming back to us given that we are all confined you know in our house as best we move from one room to the other 
while you are, you and what is most important sir is that you are with family you know you're mm-hmm. in full house together but yet many people feel lonely and not alone yes yes of course definitely see any time uh, anything any hindrance any hindrance comes in your life you know a lot of people go through physical injury ki 3 mahine ke liye plaster lag gaya 6 mahine ke liye bedridden ho gaye surgery post surgery so all those emotions happen but there is a silver lining you feel that a 3 mahine ke baad theek ho the reason why there is so much um, uh, happening negativity happening because of corona is because there is no silver lining out there the uncertainty which is coming from outside world is seeping into our homes whether there will be a vaccine whether there will be a herd immunity whether we will survive whether my parents will survive whether my children will be okay whether the schools will open or not that uncertainty is coming into our homes which is causing the more negativity and anxiety inside all of us and playing with our minds i think most important for us to understand is that we have a lot of inbuilt resilience all human beings we have our survival instincts are so strong so strong and resilience is so strong that we can we can win over this and if we have this belief that ultimately everything will get all right you know we always when we are in crisis we feel that ye kab khatam hoega ha but hame malum hai ki ye khatam ho jayega bure se buri cheez bure se bura time jo hai wo khatam ho jayega so even this is not too far and we've now learned you know we've all learned to cope with it we've devised our own formula to deal with corona in our own way my uh, it's a i'm taking you away it's a very small gesture i had my ma- my part time maid came back up uh, tomorrow came back yesterday after four and a half months ever since lockdown yesterday was her first day and between my husband and i we diligently been cleaning our house you know with sweeping mopping everything yesterday she came and she took out kitna sara kooda and i was like you failed me lady like i felt as if i had failed in my job of cleaning the house when after four and a half months she takes out so much garbage from inside the house so why i talk about it is that we are not being judged we will not be judged by the outside world that how you spend these four months what is important for us would be to keep our resilience and look at the silver lining that yes it will all get over eventually we'll all be out we'll meet friends we'll meet friendly we might have economic issues because kisi ko bhi puri salary nahi mili hai kisi ko bhi pura acche se kuch nahi hua hai but that's that's just a struggle you know that's a phase which will get over worst illnesses get over worst problems get over we come out of grief we, le- we lose our loved ones yet we bounce back so this is nothing you'll all you'll all be winners you'll all come back as winners absolutely so thank you so much for uh, being with us i'll just read out uh, one or two comments uh, yeah, somebody please, saying please. that you know feeling unloved is sad at any age and uh, happy mothers make happy children So Absolutely. I think uh, you know your talk today has resonated with a lot of us, and I'm Thank sure you, so uh, you. you know the ones who are watching and who would eventually uh, watch the uh, video on Facebook would uh, definitely get a lot of insight from you. And uh, we hope uh, that you know each of us is able to keep our minds happy and positive in these challenging times. I hope. So. I really. I pray. To, I pray, yeah. and I hope that uh, we all uh, come back as fighters, and we. we do a better job and one day we'll all physically meet <laughs> come out Absolutely. of this virtual thing and ekta and akansha will hold a grand uh, meeting with all of us together <laughs> yeah we we really want to do that and uh, you know we were also been backing our minds how to do everything virtually but uh, but great anyhow, job I great think, job great job great job so anyhow, proud of how you. we learn how to you know deal with things and as you said we're all coping to the new normal and uh, so thank you so much for talking about this sensitive topic which thank was you. much needed and uh, thank you for sharing your personal experience it, it i think really takes a lot of courage to you know speak about your personal experiences about your self about your children in a public forum so i really applaud you for that and you know oh, much, thank you thank you very much much, much, you. much appreciate your uh, sharing thank you. so thank, thank you. you everybody who was uh, listening to thank our conversation with uh, taking with out time on a sunday evening thank you
yeah with miss pranjali malhotra we'll be back uh, soon with another interesting topic till then stay tuned signing out ekta sagar malhotra thank you so much thank you so much